Hey everyone, it's me, Kenzie Taylor, and it is time to get saucy. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and enjoy the sauce. Hey everybody, this is Julia Ann, and you're watching The Sauce with Kinsey Taylor. New episodes are every Tuesday. Don't miss them. Anyhow, it's one of their sites, and it's basically, they take the white woman, and they put her in the room full of militant, suit wearing black panther style behavior like this is what they are a group of black men and they're like <gasps> and then it's basically the white woman's going to get just you know face fucked and they're going to come all over her and stuff yeah. like that no it wasn't even it was all bj oh uh, okay a blow bang I, I, oh, yeah. but the name of it was either bro bang bro bang but i don't i think it was the brother load <laughs> i've done it twice so <laughs> Once wasn't enough. <laughs> Anyhow, second time I actually got railed. Okay. <laughs> Militant black guys that are wanting to mess, race play the white woman into like oblivion. Yeah. <laughs> because the black, the the white man is oppressed. This is literally what was said though. Yeah. Like, it's just, yeah. I'm not even making it up. Yeah. And I felt like, wow, this is so awkward that I have to find a way to make it my own. Right? Yeah. So I started getting st kind of silly with it. And so instead of like being like, oh no, this isn't happening. I was like, I admit the white, the white man is like, and I totally went there and I was like, I'll take it because the white man's been bad to you. Like I just, I had to find a way to just like go with it. And they're like, okay. So, <laughs> I'll they're like, take we it got one you. for the team. Yeah. Like I was just, oh my God. And when it was over, they were just like, you. Just you, 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 and I was like, I don't know. I top from the bottom. I don't know. Like I've been told. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Sauce with Kenzie Taylor. Today, my guest is a global fucking superstar over here, Julia Ann. I know you hate that, but <laughs> you really are. <laughs> You really are. It's Julianne, everybody. I, every I, time it happens, <laughs> people do it. And it's only, it just means I haven't left. It yeah. It just means that no matter how many times they tried to kick me out, I didn't go. Yeah. That's all it means. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been in since 92, is that correct? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really fucking awesome. A long time. I actually looked up, I wanted to see your first award you ever won. It was uh, in Avian Awards, 1994, mm -hmm. best all-girl sex scene. And the film was Hidden Obsessions. Me and Janine, yeah. Yeah? Oh, Janine. It was the first scene we ever did. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's hot. Um, it was, uh, we actually, that's when we started. We shot it in 92. Because, mm -hmm. as you know, if you shoot something towards the end of 92, mm -hmm. it's not coming out to 93. Yep. So it's not a till 94 exactly right yeah for awards so it was actually that yeah oh wow it well, was a andrew blake movie okay so what was the first scene you ever shot in general it was that, was that, that was it that yeah. was your very first that scene was, that was the first scene that wow we shot. yeah it That's was pretty with, amazing it was with uh ice dildos okay yeah it was very cold. Yeah, I was going to say, how cold was it? They had a bucket of warm water there. And uh, really, we didn't even sit in it. We just kept sticking our hands in it because our hands, just the nerves on your hands just can't handle it. And yeah. the PA would run by and grab it out of our hands with a towel because it was just uh, so freaking cold. And they had like uh, five of them, I think it was, sculpted and in the freezer. So every time we had to pick back up, um, they would melt it down to like match where we left off t so that way we had continuity. Wow. So they like really paid attention to every little well, detail. Andrew Blake is a, a cinematographer. Yeah. So it's not, it, it, he wasn't really, uh, his stuff is, it was like Andrew Blake and then Michael Nin and uh, Cameron Grant. Like they were big cinematographers. So mm -hmm. everything was very... Um, Arti uh, artistic and all shot on film and mm -hmm. so well I guess the process was probably a lot different back then as opposed to nowadays shooting on film and then now just I mean you could even shoot on the phone if you want 
that's well, yeah. You can't just shoot on your phone. But the Some cameras of the phones now. are like amazing. Yeah, right? right. I know the new iPhone. It's it's really good. Um, but I guess uh, what was the process like back then on set? I mean, because they had catering and all these different things. I need to hear about this. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> You know, it's almost an unfair kind of representation because Andrew Blake uh, being he, he, not a lot of directors even back then directed that. Uh, God, it was like film, like more of a noir. Yeah, like, it, it didn't. It, it, everybody else was shooting like, you know, just movies. Or, yeah. But but his was not. It was stylized. Um, sometimes it was without any words at all. Um, everything was almost talked through, mm -hmm. so you knew everything that he was doing. You know, he'd be like, "I'm panning down to your feet." I'm panning up towards. He'd call it the fui fui. <laughs> That was our Love fui fui. <laughs> and um, yeah, so everything was very slow, methodically kind of planned out, uh, you know, pivot this way, turn that, like everything. There was like a full crew. So this is like my beginning, right? So, yeah. Um, yes, there was catering. We had wardrobe and the wardrobe <laughs> were these French women who came in with all this latex and they would... Uh, powder you down and so they could get the latex on you and then mm -hmm. they would clean it up and then they would then oil up the latex or whatever it was they used to shine it after they had I mean everything and it one would be like pushing your boob back with one hand and the other one was pulling the latex oh god <laughs> and, and it took a lot like yeah. it was like no joke it wasn't like oh I got this latex dress and I got it on no it took two people yeah yeah to it, get you into the wardrobe <laughs> like it was not they weren't playing and the hair and makeup it, it you know it was the three hour hair and makeup because it was rollers and it was like it's everything's very substantial everything yeah. Everything was done 110%. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't any cutting corners. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a lot of cutting in general on like actual filming, correct? I no, mean, the there was a lot of cutting. Oh, there is. Okay. It's very positioned. Okay. It's very positioned. So it there's no... Uh, there's no transitions. It's just cut, 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 and then they put it all together? They, I mean, however he wanted it, you okay. know, because, yeah, you'd be one minute, he'd be panning up, and then it might dissolve into something else. Yeah, you know? got it. Um, yeah, he's definitely, uh, I know he's someone that Seth looks up to, so I've never watched his stuff, but I heard it's incredible. Like, a, it's very stylized. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's what some people, it, it's erotica. Yeah. Right? It's like, it's old-fashioned, like yeah um erotica so you know the girls would be he did like latex a lot the girls would wear the um, like the ballet heels mm -hmm. have you ever put those on i've never put them on but i've seen them and shockingly they look uncomfortable painful yeah shockingly painful i uh i had them on one time and i i think he actually ended up putting it on somebody else because i was like i can't possibly i can't stand yeah like i could not get a grip on them yeah um, they just weren't working for my feet and i i just couldn't do it uh physically they look painful <laughs> <laughs> they're no joke they're no joke so fast forwarding to um you know a little bit further on when it came to like the year 2000 what was that like for you in your career at that time oh god 2000 2000 was what was i 30 something um i think i was with wicked okay i think i was a contract actress with wicked at the time okay if i remember correctly uh somewhere in there so you did x amount of scenes per month x amount of, uh movies per year movies per year got it yeah it was movies per year so i was contracted for x amount of movies per year um and with that came you know like uh days like let's say avn days you know where mm -hmm. you would appear so you had appearance days involved and and such like that so yeah um i did that for a while uh i was originally vivid 
mm-hmm. contract, and then uh, I went to a Wicked contract after a very, very, very short stint with Digital Playground. I contracted <laughs> with them, and I it was me and Tara, Patrick, and I just did not jive with what how they wanted to shoot like it was it was like guerrilla shooting Mm, you know and I didn't want to go somewhere that we weren't welcome and shoot someplace where we could get caught and then people get mad and I I just I'm not built like that like I want to go somewhere where I know everybody's on the same page and and we have the rights to be in this person's home and also too you're if you're you know you're coming from vivid and you're coming from erotic and beautiful and glamorous and then trying to be transferred into that I mean that is like a different world right and and while while they produce pretty looking stuff right like pirates and all that which I think they got in trouble for the pirate ship right I I I just I couldn't get behind uh uh like being in Europe and being like oh we got to run out of this house because the wife came home and she doesn't know we're here like so now we're (laughs) running out the back door right yeah and, and like I can't what's happening or we go to freaking Hawaii and it's me and Tara and a uh, male talent and we're we go and we're like hiking in a in a monk's resort and then it's like okay we're gonna shoot in the in, in the waterfall I'm like it's a freaking monk like yeah like like this is like a spiritual dude like i mean this is like a sanctuary what's happening (laughs) so i was like i don't think i can do this anymore and i remember i came back from europe and they pulled me and my they pulled my agent in they were like you know just she just acts like she doesn't want to be here and he goes funny you should mention it because she doesn't want to be here like (laughs) i gotta go i gotta leave um I I I want to be comfortable and I don't want to upset anybody and I and I certainly don't want anybody being mad at me because I'm shooting in their house like yeah yeah <laughs> I need the stress that's not right what so. would you say um was the difference as opposed to you know being with Vivid and then being with Wicked like if you had to compare those experiences what was the biggest difference you think uh, it's hard to say I think the biggest difference was my age yeah <laughs> yeah because I was 20 I think it said you were 26 when you started or 25 it was like 23 when I started oh really okay and the internet lies yeah <laughs> let me think yeah it would be like 23 or 20 yeah it would have to be because I'm 53 right so but it had to have been 23 <laughs> so in any way <laughs> um they may not take into effect that we shot it, though, in 92. Mm-hmm. And it didn't get released till 94. Got it. Or, okay. Sorry, didn't release till 93, and it was up for awards in 94. So maybe they're taking that into, like... Possibly. Yeah. The eight, it's the, IAFD, just so you know, if you want to tell them care. you're wrong. I was gonna- anyway. <laughs> Anyhow. I can't even fight with Wikipedia. Yeah. Like, I, they put in there that I was a penthouse pet. And I went in and I was like, I'm not a penthouse pet. Yeah. And I changed it. And then somebody put back in there. I know for a fact she was a penthouse pet. And they put it in. And I was like, I... Do you? Yeah. Because <laughs> like, I'm confused. You're like, I really not. I thought but- I knew. <laughs> And you're telling me you know. Yeah. So I was very confused. You're a pet house pet to that person. This That's all that I matters. Quit. Yeah. I quit. I quit. I quit. Sure. I'm a monkey in a zoo. Call me whatever you like. Um, anyhow. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think age really. Because, um, yeah, you're in your early 20s and you're feeling it. Mid 20s, you're feeling it. You're dating people. Making bad decisions. And uh, that affect your career. And then in your 30s, I think you become a little bit more like, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Like, what are we doing? Like, uh, I'm 32. And that's exactly. We got, we got, we got stuff to do, you right? You got that right. We got yep. stuff to do. Yeah. Um, let's get the set going. Like, yep. What are we shooting? So <laughs> I think that there's a little bit of a, I think that that's probably the biggest difference. Okay. Yeah. Cause the companies in themselves, Vivid versus Wicked. I mean, they had similar shooting. Mm-hmm. styles mm-hmm. um i think as far as like signings go and things like that like avn i think the difference was vivid wanted to um put their girls on a pillar right so they seemed almost unreachable 
And then I think Wicked's thought was sort of like to do the opposite, which is sort of put him ground level, like in signing so that we were approachable. Mm -hmm. So uh, there might've been a difference in the feel of the company where Mm -hmm. one wanted us to seem like, oh, and the other one was like, hey. I I feel like from what you're sharing, like with Vivid, it was like, there was more mystique and you're like a little bit more untouchable. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Because I mean, if you're, even if you're comparing that to now, I mean, everything is attainable. Yes. Like be- beyond everything is attainable. There's a lot of immediate gratification. Yeah. It's a problem. Yeah, it's it's a lot different, that's for sure. Yeah. So what about um, the award shows? Because I heard that, you know, back then they were elaborate. Uh, oh, the AVM was so wonderful back yeah. then. I mean, not for nothing, but you guys got to bring back the, the banquet. Like we had dinner tables and everything, you know, the, it was like a full on dinner and they brought you, you know, what would you like? Do you want this or that? And we got, you know, chicken or prime rib or whatever it was. And, and there was the full like, uh, hors d'oeuvre table. And uh-huh. the, I mean, it Love was that. really, really nice. Big round tables, white linens and was really fun. Now they're like, um, do you want a box of popcorn while you starve outside of the show? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I don't want popcorn Is in my teeth. Yeah. Around here? <laughs> I wish they would bring that back. Um, I felt the shift. There was one year that it had all the talent was like on this bottom floor and then above in the higher seats around, like the balcony seats were like all the fans and stuff like that. And I remember being on the floor going, I feel like we're in a Roman Coliseum and they're about ready to unleash the lions and the tigers and we're on the floor and all the people above are going to watch the show. I mean, it yeah. felt very weird. And I, yeah. and I thought, I don't, I don't want to be the entertainment like this right now. Like it feels awkward. Yeah. Um, I liked it better when we were all like, running back and forth from table to table and sitting and talking and Mm -hmm. eating and I feel like it was uh, I don't know if it was because the budget was higher or if it was just I don't know different with uh, the venues back then or something I don't know the the way that these hotels are set up is weird like now this year they had it and it was literally like movie theater seating yeah. So everybody's getting up to, you know, accept an award on stage and they're, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, got to get by, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. It was, and then it the, was I understood they had the fa- they had people up in the top. And I was like, do we not realize that I think putting performers up in an area where you're just with possibly fans that aren't, like or a little bit maybe too um listen i got i'm gonna say it like I, no you can say like, anything you some want fans that if i were ended up sitting next to or up there i would feel very unsafe yeah and i feel yeah. like that's sort of awkward yeah uh, i mean you're uh, there's nothing wrong with you saying that because that is real just so everybody knows like there's not only do we deal with yeah. amazing fans that are kind and get us generous gifts and they're nice to us and all that stuff. They're respectful, travel to come see us, all of that stuff. There's some that'll follow we you also back deal, to your room. Yeah, we also deal with the ones follow you back to your hotel room, mm-hmm. stop you in the hotel lobby, follow you around in general, stalk you around the convention, try to uh, wait in line Death a million mail. times. Just Yeah. I don't <laughs> like there's so many things like I- I've had the whole true. kidnap you, tie you up, throw you in the back of car conversation, yeah. you know, in the trunk of my car. And I'm like, dude, what if I end up sitting next? Like, I don't want to be up there. Like, I don't. Yeah. Why is that a thing? So, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's OK. What do you think Things was you're playing? <laughs> What do you think? I mean, obviously you've done like over a thousand scenes. So if you had to think of something offhand that was like just the craziest, most wild experience or scene that you did, what would you say that was in your time? I don't know that I've done anything. I mean, I I think about wild. Yeah. Okay. I was actually talking about this the other day because... (laughs) There's always every generation that's new in this industry starts talking about that, you know, oh, things are changed. It's so aggressive now. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't think, you know, like I remember when Rob Black came in and was like, you know, had sex with, I don't remember who it was, 
Jenna Hayes. I don't know. He did did sort of scene with somebody. I can't remember who it was. And Quasar and I were talking about it. And then after they all use and abuse this girl in this, which consensually, um, after they do all this stuff with this girl who's in a wheelchair, they put her back in her wheelchair and then push it into the pool for her to drown. I mean, like, oh, do, you, do you know what I'm saying? So, like, when I hear consensually. people. <laughs> <yes>. Consensually. <laughs> it was in the script. Um, it was on the calendar. It had to happen. So. I he got in trouble though for the stuff he did. He yeah. definitely did. But but <laughs> um I don't when I think about what crazy is, I go, Oh god, have I really done anything crazy? I mean, I don't think I have anything. I I did uh gang banged. I did do some dark fart stuff though. Mm-hmm. That was pretty freaking off the cuff like and yeah. admittedly the director i adore you mr watson he uh at the same time we did a whole week of stuff and then on the last day he was like okay so the last scene i haven't told you about yet um for a reason i was like wow did you just admit to like holding back me yeah. being here doing my having my makeup done and everything and then going mm, hadn't quite told you um, he was like, yes. I go, kind of admire that, that you admitted it. Like, yeah. not that you did it, but like that you had just admitted You owned your shit, yeah. Yeah, I'm like kind of impressive. So um, he was like, yeah, so it's, it's, is it bro bang? I don't think it's the mother load. Anyhow, it's one of their sites and it's basically, they take the white woman. Yeah. And they put her in the room full of militant suit wearing Black Panther style behavior. Like this is what they are, a group of black men. Like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, Ooh. and then it's basically the white woman's going to get just, you know, um, face fucked and they're going to come Cloud. all over her and stuff yeah. like that. No, it wasn't even, it was all BJ. Oh, uh, okay. A blow I, bang. I, it was, but I don't know if it was bro. It's called either bro bang or mother load. It was one of them, and I can't remember which one. It, or brother, no, but that type of load. scene's called a brother blow bang. Load. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But the name of it was either bro bang. Bro bang. But I don't. I think it was the brother load. Maybe Sarah can look that up. I think she's looking it up. Maybe. Okay, so Chris Dream <laughs> shot one of me, but that was different. And then dog farts would have either been brother load or Robing. One of them, I'm confused. Yeah. Which one? I've done it twice. So, <laughs> once wasn't enough. Anyhow, second time I actually got railed. Okay. <laughs> it was Nat. Second time I came into sorry, a gangbang. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so. No. No, no, no. It would have been in 2000s. the 2000s. So, uh, anyhow. They were very militant. And they had a whole thing, a whole little speech that they just lined up. And I remember that they took, <laughs> the director took this pillow and put it on the ground in in front of all of them. And I was like this, I am not getting on that pillow. <laughs> now, I don't care how much spood you want to throw at me. I know that pillow's never been cleaned a day in its life, yeah. okay? Like, I knew every girl <laughs> in the history of that, of yeah. that site <laughs> kneeled on that pillow. Like, put a black light on that thing, and it's going to look no, crazy. No, yeah. thing's not okay. <laughs> so I looked at it, and I went like, oh, yeah, for real? Like, you need to put a blanket or something happening over this situation yeah. here. So that was where I drew the line, okay? <laughs> I didn't draw the line at the militant black guys that are wanting to mess race play the white woman into like oblivion. Yeah. <laughs> because the black the the white man is oppressed. This is literally what was said though. Yeah. Like it's yeah. I'm not even making it up. Yeah. And I felt like, wow, this is so awkward. Um that I have to find a way to make it my own. Right? Yeah. So I started getting st kind of silly with it. And so instead of like being like, oh no, this isn't happening. I was like, I admit the white, the white man is like, and I totally went there and I was like, I'll take it because the white man isn't bad to you. Like I just, I had to find a way to just like go with it. And they're like, okay. So, 
They probably loved it at that point. They're like, we got you. for the tea. Like, I was just, oh my God. And when it was over, they were just like, you. Just you. You, you, you. And I was like, I don't know. I top from the bottom. I don't know. Like, I've been told. (laughs) So if you had to um, think in your head of how many, like, blow bangs or gang bangs you've done in your entire span of your career. How many? No, I've done... How many constitute as a as a bang? Um, I think if it's more, it's if it's more than three. So if it's like four or five, six beyond. So there was a blowjob when where I think that there was four or five around me, but it was just a smaller part of a la- a larger scene that might have been an orgy. Mm. Yes. It was a big boob orgy by Zero Tolerance that Quasar shot. I was just about to say, didn't Mike Quasar direct he that? He did. There were so many of us in there. <laughs> um, it was terrifying how many. It was like Phoenix and and Francesca Lay and like, oh, we were all in it. Um, in any case, uh, I think there was, if I remember correctly, there was like a little uh, blowjob thing in the beginning, unless that was a different scene, same location. Mm. this happens yep um porn foggy so brain <laughs> if you count the beginning of a larger scene then you're looking at maybe three blow bangs then yeah two of them one was the other bro bang one was the other is the brother load i don't know which and then that that one and then there's been orgies there's have been you, one gang bang have you done a dp yeah yeah have you yeah, done a it, showcase before as it, well, I did gang banged, okay. and gang banged was elegant. Mason's, yeah, Mason shot it for elegant, and it was uh, there's like two scenes in it, but really it's like whoever the main scene is, and then there's like a second scene in, in on the video, yeah, um, with someone else. But you're like the a headliner or whatever of yeah that yeah DVD. typically showcase the the female is in all the scenes yeah they're so all different scenes i had i had wicked do one called julia ann hardcore mm-hmm. and it was me doing a bunch of things that i'd never done did you get to choose your talent for each of those yeah that's awesome yeah yeah but that's fairly common I feel like nowadays it's like you do have a say, but then you kind of don't because the the male like, talent pool is very small. Well, the other problem is <laughs> is that when you're niched, mm-hmm. which I would be niched, yeah. right? So it's not like, oh, so John Strong's not available. Let's get Mark Wood. Okay, Mark Wood's not available. Let's get James Dean. Oh, James Dean's not available. Let's get like you don't have this thing. It's like, oh, Juan Loco's not available. Who else looks like they're twelve? Like I. <laughs> Well, it looks like they're 12. Yeah, for real, though. You know? And yeah. then if you're somebody like me who's like, I get too yeah, I draw the line they... at 18, they have to at least look 18. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I have to be the, sco- the, the, the college stepmom. We're not even doing high school, okay? Yeah. And it's a little creepy. Yeah, I can't uh, do it. So when they're like, hey, will you work with so-and-so? I'm like, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I've turned no. down a scene before with, with a guy um, just because I was really freaked out by how young he looked. Even I don't even care. Like, yeah, you can be twenty one, but like I when hear you, there's a new one that's like a little blonde kid. Like when you look that young, it's just No, it we're scares tapping into me. something that I don't like. Yeah, it freaks me out too, even if it's a female. I'm like, it's just I don't like it. I don't know. I, I just think of the like I can't even put my mind to the no. mindset of the person that's enjoying seeing something like that. You know what I mean? Like why? And I realize that to some degree, you know, we're supposed to do a job. So you're hired to do yeah. a job. Yeah, okay. But our job is physical. And yeah. if I am having to block out the person that I'm doing the scene with, like legit, like yeah. not being like, all right, you're not my favorite person to work with, mm-hmm. but you're benign. I'm cool. But to actually have to block it out to some degree yeah. or to find a way to be okay. Makes it not fun. Makes it. It beyond not not fun. enjoyable, to me, not it be, fun. It, it makes it icky. Yeah, I mean, actually icky. Like yeah. not even just like not fun. I mean, I would actually be like, I'm just struggling. Yeah, and I've only struggled one time, like that. And the person actually was of my age. Uh huh. So we were all in our like 30s, 
but there was something about the fact that they were having they were struggling getting hard Mm -hmm. and they were laying flat on their back on the floor because that's kind of where we were and i was just sitting there trying to like stroke them to get them keep them hard or Mm -hmm. get them hard trying to help and it was just stayed flaccid which after a while my brain kind of said god i feel like i'm touching a kid like because it was just like it he felt helpless to me and i had yeah. to let go i had to walk away and i had to never work with the person again yeah you should have got up to let his blood flow move around but i don't think yeah. we were gonna get yeah. there regardless <laughs> i've, of I've had that did. happen before and um i will say like i'm not at this point now but i was at this point mm-hmm. mentally when it happened i'm like oh my god Am I disgusting? What did I do? I Am know. I not attractive? Do I need to, did I forget to shave my legs? What's happening? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. Right. I'm like checking my pussy. I'm like, am I bleeding? I don't know what's going on. Right. But yeah. I don't have a sponge in. You yeah. Have no <laughs> like, you have no excuses. I just want to make sure. Way. Yeah. I so that way. It, yeah, but when they're flaccid like that, you start feeling like you're babysitting. And I was just like, this is weird. Like, I'm starting to actually feel like I'm fondling somebody who's not pubescent. Yeah. And I had to walk away. Yeah. I yeah. I was like, we, I'll, I can never work with you again. Like, I, I can't because mm-hmm. now I have that. Yeah. That's what I have in my brain. And that's not okay. Everyone <laughs> definitely... Um, I think obviously both for male and female and, and non-binary, um, everyone has to be completely aware mentally of Mm -hmm. what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're agreeing to do for a scene. Because I will say like going on set and then somebody ends up reading the script while they're there and they're like, Oh, I don't want to do this. It's like we got the script mailed to us like a week ago. Yeah, you have no choice. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, they, you have a choice. You can leave. I mean, yeah. But but the but the producer director are limited in choice. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But you know what? You know where that comes from? Unless they're self booking, mm-hmm. then you've got agents aren't giving necessarily. Sometimes I'm not going to say all the time, but sometimes they sit on stuff. Yeah. And they give it to you at the last minute because they wanted to rewrite it their way or they wanted to do some stuff. And now Mm -hmm. you have it the day before. And then you go to set and you're like, I don't understand. I just got this. And they're like, but we gave it to your agent a week ago Mm -hmm. or two weeks ago. And then. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's That's awesome. Thank you. (laughs) And that has happened to me. Mm -hmm. And then there's times that the companies don't don't uh, get it. And now. Uh, with the difference in the way people are shooting scenes, like these ad scenes or these mm. free use scenes, I can't. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I think that sometimes if you've got a bigger company that's overseeing the production company, they're not getting the script to the production company necessarily fast enough. Yeah. Then the production company has their hands tied trying to get it done into people as fast as possible so there's all these ways that that gets ends up happening yeah, but yeah definitely. um how would you say like you know obviously from the beginning of your career and then up until now how have you been able to successfully maintain your longevity because as a female performer, like you're definitely, I'm not just saying this cause you're here. You're definitely one of the women that like I look up to in this industry because you're, you're, you're smart as hell. Obviously you're fucking beautiful, <laughs> but you're smart as hell. And like you really actually care about more things than just like fucking like you're a huge advocate for animal rights and rescuing animals, which I think is so amazing, but just many other trouble. things. But I will say like, to be able to maintain lo- the longevity like you have, it's not a lot of people have been able to do that. I mean, it's... But there's it's, no plan. Yeah. Are you just kind of just... you just here. Continue to go with you the flow? You just go to work. <laughs> like, it's just yeah. no plan. Yeah. Just go to work. Yeah. Like, I know some people have been like... You know, there's people performers that have been around for a little bit but and they have pity parties because they're like i don't understand you know why i don't get this or that and the other thing and i'm like and you do and i'm like i just don't leave like honestly like i just haven't left try not leaving like i uh, that's what i've got you know longevity is that you're still here like yeah and you're not (laughs) 
and and that you still are working enough that you're satisfied like mm-hmm. that's just longevity now i'm not really shooting for outside companies i'm now doing the only fans thing my mm-hmm. website which i've had since i was like 28 and so i i am just doing for myself and that's fine um but longevity is just not leaving which is upsetting when I hear people get told that there's no such thing as longevity in the business anymore because longevity is literally you're just not leaving. Yeah. And you're just maintaining good relationships with people that they want to have you on set and that your fans like to buy your stuff. Like, yeah, that's really all it is. So and a lot of it is reputation. So if, if you're respectful, you know, you're people you're, will shoot you. <laughs> It especially show it, up on time. <laughs> if you show up on time and you're and you're nice to yeah. work with, mm-hmm. like at least ninety percent of the time. Okay, everybody has their everybody has their days. There are some people I guarantee who hate me because I was on set that day and some sh- came out of my mouth, and because I was in a mood. Um, absolutely, mm-hmm. uh, but for the most part, people also would be like, "Well, that's not." typically her character clearly she wasn't feeling well clearly something's going on yeah you know uh but yeah just show up and do your job and and develop friendships because when stuff hits the fan that's how you get by is that those people you rely on each other it's like having neighbors Mm -hmm. get to know your neighbors because the shit hits the fan. Your neighbors are the ones that are going to be the first people to give you a flashlight. Like, mm-hmm. so I don't know. I feel like that's, that's how you stay. You know, you just, you just develop. Like, I'm not going anywhere. I will say, I think a lot of people kind of drop the ball when they like announce via Twitter, you know, that they're retiring or they do like press releases and stuff. And then six months later, a year later, they come back or they say they're leaving and then they bash yeah. the industry. And then two years later, try to come back. And it's like, wait a second. Were you the yeah. person that said fucking porn's disgusting and ruined yeah. your life? Yeah. But now you want to shoot? Well, I don't understand. <laughs> like, Right. So I think that that is, is and another And you know what? Thing. The industry may take you back. Okay. Because here's the thing. We all have things, right? Yeah. So I've been in a, I've been in abusive relationships where I left the industry because the person was extremely abusive and they were like, this is crap. That's crap. That crap. Everything's crap. So I left and I said, I got to go because everything's crap. And they would be like, oh, really? Everything's crap. And then you come back, you're like, okay, so everything's not really crap. But this person <laughs> yeah. has been uh, on me. Yeah. And I adopted some of that to survive. So mm-hmm. I don't necessarily get mad at everybody who does that, but here's the reality. When you come back, they'll shoot you, Mm -hmm. but you've lost momentum. Definitely. You have lost momentum. And this is my, I'm telling you this from personal experience, you've lost momentum. Mm -hmm. You've also lost some faith, Mm -hmm. right? And it takes a long time to get that faith back from people, if ever. Mm -hmm. Um. So it definitely can be detrimental. I mean, you want to retire out or say you're retired or really feel you want to retire, then okay. But yeah, I'd leave the negative stuff alone because that's the stuff it's it's hard to recover from. Even if you're feeling it that moment, know that you may not feel it in 10 years. So just keep that part to yourself. Yeah, because unfortunately... A lot of the times, you know, you could say a million nice things, but Mm -hmm. one mean negative, you know, thing that you say, everyone could remember that. But people do adopt Mm -hmm. quite often Mm -hmm. the energy of the people that they are surrounded by at the time. Mm -hmm. And in order to survive, you adopt it and you and you spew it. Mm -hmm. So that way those people will see that. No, I, I agree with you. I'm going to leave. So you be nice to me. We have a new future. And the next thing you know, that future explodes. And, and you're like, oh, damn, because I never really meant that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I just just trying to. And now you've got to come back from that. And mm-hmm. everybody's like, yeah, I remember what you said. And you're like, you know, I know, but I was getting my ass whooped. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, I know you. But it's sorry, but not sorry. Like, <laughs> now you got to like clean up a bunch of shit on the side of your street. You it's know? true. It's true. It's hard. It's it's hard. I don't know. I think that 
biggest peeve I've got about everything going on right now is that we hold everybody to some sort of standard on social media that no human, no homo sapien Mm -hmm. can possibly live under yeah like the perfection that we (laughs) expect from one another and if god forbid everybody has a different idea of what that perfection is too so god forbid you say or you do that wrong thing (laughs) and and it's like oh you wait but you're not perfect so now you're in trouble and you're like wow we all expect so much yeah no one's perfect where 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 before social media y'all we got to mess up like you yeah. got to mess up big and then learn and then and own also people and talk grow. to each other in their face everybody would go face to face and talk it wouldn't be like hey at yy2257 <laughs> fuck you you know what i mean yeah. like <laughs> it was like hey i'm on my way over to your house <laughs> yeah <laughs> later <laughs> see there's on the a, cord phone <laughs> there's a couple things that happened recently that made me laugh what was it um I was saying this the other day. Oh, okay. So a certain someone in our business got called out for having a a relationship with a higher up in our business for all these years. (laughs) And no one, well, not all of us knowing about it. And then the person who was really, who was cheated on and felt slighted, um, got in their vehicle. This is why I love my generation. (laughs) got in their vehicle, drove to the business location and stood on the car with a bullhorn, letting the entire neighborhood- I know neighborhood, this, I know like, this, I yes, died. Yes, you do know I this. Died, I, I died, I died. I died too. But this is, yeah. but to me, this is a difference <laughs> between today's generation yeah. who's gonna go in there and go, I'm gonna subtweet you. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and my generation will, we will, burn calories mm-hmm. and gas mm-hmm. to come to you mm-hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> and and there will be there there will be more calories burned yeah. <laughs> in some fashion um yeah there will be consequences for your actions i'm telling yeah. you and i had to laugh and i was like that's that's how we did it that's yeah how we do we throw chairs yeah like, that's we, like real shit we get up yeah <laughs> we go to you because the thing t- is uh, a lot of the people that say, you know, things or say someone says something shitty to you or about you and it's on yeah. social media, you see that person, you know, in person. Oh, hi. I'm like, wait a what second. That? What's going on here? Or they avoid you at all living costs. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, you should walk away. Cause, yeah. Cause I would be embarrassed too. Because like. I'm 53. Like, I have a different experience than you. Mm-hmm. You're going to walk up and be like, hi. And I'm going to go, what are you, cracked? Like... <laughs> This will happen. It will come out of my mouth. I've done this. Let's not kid ourselves. We don't like each other. Let's not pretend. Like, Well, I know a happy subject is you're a huge advocate for, you know, animals' rights and adoption and fostering. Another thing that gets me enemies. A lot of trouble. Yeah. Sometimes other, like, people get very mad at me because... Not everybody feels the way you do about animals, Julia. Well, then why do they need to say anything? I'm like, That's the way I look at don't it. have them. When did you decide you first, uh, you know, wanted to start doing things such as, you know, uh, fostering and adoption and all I of that? I have no idea. You know, I had a grandmother, though, that every neighborhood animal showed up or anything that was found ended up there, which in hindsight is kind of thieving. But... Uh, <laughs> But she had a whole farm, <laughs> you know, it's just that what we, it was in Silver Lake mm. in L.A. Mm. And but, you know, just the neighborhood cats, the cats would just slowly accumulate. Dogs would accumulate, you know, at the, any given time. There's five, seven dogs. There was five, seven cats. You know, she would feed neighbors like it just everything accumulated. So I always grew up in a house just full of animals. And I think that that became my comfort zone um so even later on when I didn't really have my own anymore like there was a period of time where I was kind of in a like living you know you're young you're living at grandma's and and you're working and you can dating and you don't really have you have her animals you don't have really your own animals anymore um you know I grew up riding I grew up with horses I grew up with like all that Mm -hmm. and so there's a period of time I didn't and then (laughs) it all started I was 
I was a house dancer at this place called Fritz That's It in Bellflower, okay? Fritz That's It. Fritz That's It. And I uh, was leaving one day, and there were kittens at this house down the street. And I was like, oh, there's kittens. I don't understand. There's a couple kittens. And then I saw another kitten. I was like, oh, my God, there's like three kittens. So I grabbed these kittens, and I throw them in my car. I'm like, what am I going to do with these kittens? So <laughs> I take them to a vet, and they're like, oh, and they're infested. I'm telling you. With fleas? Their, oh. every, their fur was moving. Oh. Their ears had mites from top to that Could not cure the mites. Eventually oh. had to start giving them injections because it was not, from the outside in, was not a thing. Had oh. to kill from the inside out. Um, but they were just a hot mess, these three kittens. It was two boys and a girl. And I, I was young. I was like 20-ish, maybe. And I was like, okay, so, uh, no, I was 21. Yeah, because I was working at Fritz. So um, I took them home, and I took them to a vet, and $400 later, which now is a deal. I'm just not going to lie, because I never get out of the vet without a $400 bill. So $400 later, I was like, yeah, you're my cats. And I kept them. And I think that it was just that, sort of thing you know yeah. that happened over time you know I'm um, just keeping you know I would pay I paid a there was a neighbor who kept their little dog on a leash outside and it was a little dog I'm like are you crazy so I was like I'll I'll give you I'll, I want your dog yeah and she was like well I want 25 bucks for her and I was like Okay. You're like, so I went and I got my, yeah, that's exactly, yeah. actually, I gave her 30. Yeah. It's so funny you said that. And she was like, no, I didn't really want your money. She's like, I just wanted to make sure you really wanted her. And I was like, well, no, I really want her. And here's your $30. Yeah. Yeah. And I took her, Cinnamon. <laughs> Cinnamon had a lot, nice long life. Um, and I think it's just stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it bothered me. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, Let's see, what was it? There was a, oh, there was a performer in our industry that dumped their dog at Woodley and Roscoe in the middle of the night to get rid of her. It was oh. a 10 month old Akita puppy by the name of Coco. Mm. And I found out because their own people in their camp called me. This is probably when the, the big spurt happened. Mm -hmm. People in the camp called me and they were like, he did this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? So I went down to the exact place and me and another uh, person in our industry, we know him as Shelly. Mm -hmm. Very tall Shelly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And because I didn't want to get jumped, I said, will you come with me and will you help me put up flyers everywhere? And I did. And the next morning I got a call. So found the dog. Mm -hmm. Got the dog into rescue. They found out the people who dumped. I didn't put my number on it. I put someone else's number on it because, again, I didn't want to get jumped. Mm -hmm. And when they found out, we found the dog. They called and said, we want our dog back only because they wanted to save face. Yeah. And, and my girlfriend was like, this isn't your dog. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. And then we got threatened with the beat down of our lives and a bunch Ugh. of other things. And this is still a very um, celebrated performer wow. in our industry. And uh, everybody just thinks he's so wonderful. And I know the truth because I got the threats mm -hmm. and I kept the phone. So I've forever kept that phone yeah. with all of the stuff he said to me in it. Yeah. And uh, so we got that dog in to rescue. And when, when that happened, my girlfriend who was involved in that sent me a list. And the list said there's 70, like, it was like 75 Chihuahua mixes and Chihuahuas at the East Valley shelter that are on the youth list. Oh my God. And that's God. to be destroyed. And I was like, well, what do you want to do? And she's like, you want to go get a couple? We took out 13. Wow. We took 13 with the help of a rescue because mm -hmm. we had to have a rescue to back us. Because mm -hmm. you, know, you can't just walk into a shelter and be like, give also, me 13 dogs. Yeah, so they'd be yeah. like, nah, girl. It's a whole so, process. Yeah. I volunteered at a shelter before. And yeah, it's a, like a really yeah. strict process usually. Yeah. So East Valley animal shelter we went in we pulled 13 uh mostly chihuahua mixes uh i think there was like one katahula hound and um and we fixed them up and we got them homes some of them are still alive i mean this was a long time ago 
Dude, and chihuahuas live forever. I have one of my friends, yeah. like her chihuahua lived to be like Mine 23. Mine is 16 right now. Yeah. It's, that's crazy. With a bad heart so, and bad kidneys. And he's still oh. just like, what's for dinner? Yeah. Um, he's like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I think that that was probably the first like big push. Yeah. Right. Because I had at that point 13 dogs. I had girlfriends coming over and helping me set up mm -hmm. for the influx. And I had um, different uh, two different bedrooms. And I had them split up in with the gold uh, X pens. Uh -huh. I had them split up each one into runs. Mm -hmm. And then the really sick chihuahua that I didn't want to get a draft, I actually put him in the closet to keep a draft off of him. Yeah. And we got them all. So I had like 16 dogs with my own in the house at the time. And that I was like, this is doable. Yeah, Which you're was like, unfortunate that I started to feel that way. I was like, 16 dogs, 16 <laughs> schmickstein. What's the difference? So, I love that. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's, yeah, that's where it started. And um, I've toned down. I now basically, sometimes like girls or performers or people in the industry will be like, oh, I have a puppy. It was... I had delusions of grandeur. I don't have time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so I'll find a rescue to help, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I myself, um, I've really backed off, you know, I have my four dogs and two birds mm -hmm. and, uh, then I periodically have Jenna Fox's dog, which I do right now because Hi, Jenna. <laughs> I love her. Jenna, the grim ends up at my house quite often. I'm, I'm the second home. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, it's, uh, I've, I've toned down a lot. Yeah. It makes it hard to help, you know, when you have a full house to help. So now I just take, if I can help, I, I will. Yeah. You know, you're trying probably not to overwhelm yourself, you know, your household. Well, you know, you or... get a house, you get a husband. Yeah. Your husband's yeah. not on that page. Yeah. And you're and, right. Okay. So I say to Seth all the time, we have two Frenchies currently and I'm like, I just want like 10. Like, I'll be happy with, like, 10. I just love them so much. Right. And he's like, you're insane, no. <laughs> I almost I tried why? to take London Roses. Yeah. She Maybe was, we should just move in together and we'll have, like, 50 dogs. Oh, my God. Like, that would be amazing. Kenzie and I are buying. Doggy doors some, everywhere. We're buying a house. <laughs> we're just going to put a couple friends in it and all of our dogs yes. will be there, honey. Yeah. We'll be back for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you today? At the other house. Love that. <laughs> That's epic. Yeah, I I don't know. I just there's something about I feel like sometimes it's like we don't deserve dogs cuz they're just so happy and just loving and they're the most loyal. They're always happy though. Like everybody you, knows about my hate relationship yeah. with my chihuahua. So yeah. <laughs> you I'm walk like, in the door though and they're like, Woo! I'm like they're all loyal, but that rat bastard. <laughs> they're all so wonderful. Yeah, but that rat bastard. <laughs> like everybody knows about me and the rotten chi. <laughs> you you have one that you you and him have a love hate relationship. It's a horrible animal. Yeah, everybody knows that's all I say. They're like, "How's the chi?" He's a horrible animal. Does he bite you? No, he does not bite. He makes a fool out of me because he's like, "I'm the most loving animal everywhere." I don't know what you're talking about. He's friendly with everybody. He is the sweetest, nicest, cutest, kissy, loving <laughs> thing that will escape from the house if at all possible i can't tell you how many times i've gotten a phone call and not known how how yeah how did he get out but he'll Houdini. wait <laughs> it's, it, he'll wait for like someone to go to the garage mm. then he'll sneak into the garage then if they open the garage door to go out there then he'll sneak and he'll and gone oh my god i mean he lays in wait right <laughs> yeah. he will pee on you if you turn your back and I don't mean a little bit. I mean, if you're sitting on the ground, like petting with the other dogs and you feel, if you feel him coming, you, you get up because he will pee on your back. <laughs> and then if you catch him, he does some like merry-go-round horse thing because he's so excited that like he peed on you. Yeah. He'll he marked pee. his territory. <laughs> he waits for the other dogs to go to the bathroom and when they can't move, he pees on their back. He is a he is a horrible animal. I have I have cooked his food because he has irritable bowel and lymphangiectasia. So I have cooked his food for his entire life. How how long? Venison, is that? ostrich, elk. How many years? 
He's 16 now. <laughs> I rescued him when he was nine months old. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've gone through hell and back with him and he would still you're like stop if i died me. he'd pee on me until they found me <laughs> <laughs> this is my reality hey at least they would find you because it would they'd be like where's the smell of what dog smell urine coming yeah. from? <laughs> damn you did her dirty didn't you he'd be it's, so proud of himself yeah. <laughs> look what i did like some people have to worry about like you know they think like their pets are going to eat them or something if they die at home but you he's just, just gonna, gonna get pee on, on. he's yeah. just gonna pee on me yeah <laughs> that's all he's gonna do is just pee on me over and over <laughs> he's like well, i didn't get this yet Ooh, right here so what content are you enjoying currently shooting since you shoot all your own stuff what, what do you really enjoy to do the most i like you know um i really shoot either solo or girl girl stuff mm -hmm. um but it's kind of fun when the other performer you're shooting with kind of has a they know what their fans like, right? Mm -hmm. So they're like, Sheree's perfect example of this. I don't know if you shot content with Sheree yes, yet. She's okay. very organized. So it's fun because I'll be like, why don't we shoot this? And she'll be like, yes. And then she'll turn and we'll be doing something else. And all of a sudden she'll go, <laughs> and she'll go, Okay, so we're friends. And and then she'll like give me some scenario that came out of left field. I'm like, did you just think about that in the last three minutes yeah. where we were like just waiting for Mike to do the <laughs> to like put the camera together yeah. or something? Like yeah. but it's like she had to formulate like okay. It reminds me of like wedding crashers at the end. She's like, We're a family, we're a folk uh -huh. singing family from Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. It's like she comes up with these Whole things. Story, yeah. Yeah, this backstory, and it's just, it makes me laugh. So I think that that's the stuff that's, like, really the most fun mm -hmm. because you can really, you kind of get involved in it, yeah. and it's funny, and the other person's, like, engaging, yeah. and you're on the same page, but you're not on a script. You're on your own you're time. Ad you're just ad-libbing and, and going off one another's energy, basically. Yeah, and yeah, if you fun. mess up. You laugh, yeah. and it's not like somebody says, cut, and then let's do it again. Yeah. You laugh, and you continue yeah. on. Yeah, it's so, more genuine and real. That's the thing I like about content yes. is, the, is the realness of it, not the, you know, everything's set up and right. you know, all that stuff. And I like that I can kiss for 20 minutes Yeah, if I wanted to. Yeah. Like, if the two people, if you're with somebody and all you're doing is kissing and you're like, wow, the two of you actually are kind of starting to lean into it. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean, like, like get closer, but, like, like when you hug somebody for a long period of time and you feel the bodies finally start to like lean in and it takes like what, a, like 30 seconds or something for it to actually lean in. Mm -hmm. um, it's like that, you know, when you find, you kiss somebody and for some reason, two of you get so relaxed in it mm -hmm. that you, you kind of lean into it. And I, I think that that's like amazing because otherwise your your director is going to go okay we've had enough kissing now can we move on and yeah. now i've realized no you know what we're doing we're doing a 15 minute kissing clip yep. that's how this we're is going kissing down for fucking one hour yeah. you're gonna love it yes <laughs> yeah and then that could actually be like a full clip yeah of just no this I'm, kissing there is a fetish for everything i want cuddling i told i told <laughs> i want to get paid to sleep i want somebody to want to watch me sleep for a custom. I, I want to do that so bad. I call them all the time on my live cam. Yeah. I go, can we just have an hour of cuddle time where we just lay on our sides and we nap? Let's yeah. just nap, okay? Yeah. We can put I'll put the TV. camera right here. Yeah, and let's just, <laughs> let's take a nap, okay? But I was saying this to Arabelle, uh, Raphael. I was like, I just want somebody to be like, let's have a clip of cuddling. Okay. We could just rotate five minutes. You're the big spoon. Five minutes. I'm the big spoon. I don't know. Right. <laughs> no one knows who's going to be spoon today. We'll figure it out, though, as we go along. Right. Uh, the fans are always fun, though. Like, you know, when they're giving you scenarios or just really chatting with you. But, you know, the kind ones, not the ones that are being like really hi. creepy. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Show feet. Show feet. Show Hello. me your feet. Take hi. socks off. Hi. Hi. Show Fuck bobs. you. Show bobs. Where did that come from? Show bobs. <laughs> show BB, show me bobs. How many rupees? I'm on my deathbed. Oh, I'm like, yes, what? Yes. I've had that so many. Yes. I started having to turn off my comments. 
on Instagram. I'm because, really sorry if I, yeah, maybe, if you I've are on your that. deathbed, I'm very sorry yeah. that I laughed, but you no, know. No, but like to put that in know. a comment on Instagram, like I'm on my deathbed, show me your bobs. Like you want to see my boobs because you're on your deathbed. What? Go to Google. I just like the ones that say hi <laughs> in five different ways and then that finally just curse at you. Right? Fuck you, okay? Or have arguments with themselves in your Fuck DMs, off. like my requested Instagram messages. Yeah. I love reading those sometimes. Like the ones that Sheree does, Sheree, the read aloud. Reading my DMs. It's so funny. Like I'll have ones on there where a guy is like straight up having an argument with himself. And I'm not, I didn't even write at all, but he's like arguing with himself. I it's really hilarious. I just quite entertaining. I don't understand. <laughs> and I try to be patient because I'm like, okay, clearly this is not your first second or third language and yeah. i get that translators not being kind to you at all <laughs> um thanks for trying <laughs> but it's actually insulting <laughs> what you wrote actually is actively insulting yeah <laughs> you know yeah you're like i'm gonna remove this comment now thanks mm -hmm. yeah i just started turning the comments off because i was just tired of dealing with that couldn't deal with it anymore um if you'd like to share everyone um your social media and like your OnlyFans link and all that stuff. Anything else you'd like to promote? Sure. It's the real Julia Ann. That's that's where it's at. It's yeah. easy. Yeah, my Twitter is the real Julia Ann. Love my OnlyFans is the real. My loyal fans is Julia Ann. And um, that's because um, I usually try to be uniform, although my Instagram got hacked one time mm. and I got it back. I got all my followers back, but I couldn't actually get the exact name. Somehow it would not let me have the real Julianne. So I had to put the real Julianne live. It's really weird. Yeah, I that is don't weird. have it. I huh. don't have answers to any of this technology. It's the same account, the exact same, same followers, account, but got you had all my people the... back and everything, but they weird. did something to that name that I could not get it back. Interesting. That's weird. Well, at least strange. you got it back though. And the followers back. Cause I mean, that's happening to a lot of people. Yeah. That was very strange. It was a flat, it was a flat out hack though. Yeah. Like, I got flat out hacked. I'm sorry. Um, I want to say it was that Omid guy that. That was doing a lot of people. Yeah. yeah I yeah. think I got that's. I think that's what that was. Um, so I got hacked. That was pretty bad. But loyal fans, if you have it, mm -hmm. um, if you try to search, mm -hmm. if they started putting in Julia, Julia Ann, and my thing was under the real Julia Ann, the Julia Ann would not come up in the search. Like it might, the real, it wouldn't come up as an option. Oh, wow. It wouldn't find, you actually have to put like the specific name or it won't find offshoots of the name. Interesting. Um, I don't know if they've changed that, but that's how it was. And so I was like, yeah, I need Julia Ann then because who's going to like, let me type in the real Julia Ann. That's not, that's not, that's not what they're going to do. Yeah. They're not going to want to type all of that. Yeah. No, they're going to just look for There's Julia so many Ann. fake profiles though, too. So you got to watch out. But what is that about? Everybody wants to be you, be me. Twitter just, though, making it so we can't. I cannot tag anybody. I can't tag anyone. But the best worst part is when you have a fake, you can't even report the fake because, I mean, you can report the fake, but nobody else can report the fake for you because if they try to put in who the real you is, they can't tag you now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, yep. It's, what anti-safety thing is this? I don't know what's happening to Twitter. I honestly am not liking Twitter at all anymore, really. I, I'm not on it as much because of that, like, thing. I just, I get so frustrated with it, so I'm yeah. like, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. I'd rather not even try. No. It's, it's really strange. Um, when does this get put up? When do you guys this, get to hear this? Um, It will be put up in a couple of weeks. Okay, cool. So, is there anything else you'd like to... Share with your fans or new fans. Kinsey and I are supposed to shoot together. Yes, it's going to happen. We've actually never shot together. I never. It's going to be. Mm. So we're going to do. Scissoring. <laughs> scissoring. <laughs> For anyone that's <laughs> listening to the audio version, I'm doing scissoring <laughs> with my fingers right now while I look at Julia. <laughs> I was uh, doing it back because yeah. it seemed um, aggressive yes, and I liked it. It's very aggressive. <laughs> um yeah, we're going to shoot together, and it's it was funny because I, I said, do you want to shoot? And she was like, yeah, I want to shoot. And then I was like, should we ask anybody else? Because I know, like, Lumi Ray said she wanted to shoot, and then she was like, I love Lumi Ray. And I was like, all right, then let's ask Lumi Ray. And Lumi Ray was like, yay. And then Kinsey goes, 
all right, so I've asked so and so and so and so and so and so. It's like, damn, what just happened? Because I know that those girls are great balls, so they're reliable as well. Yes. So we're going to have a great day. And also, it's a big variety, too. Yes. You know what I mean? We're yes. all so different. So, and that's always good to offer variety. So, right. And yeah. What do you think about people calling you mommy? No. No? No. You know? Yeah. No, I know. I did uh, like no. a stepmom scene recently, Arabella and I talked about that. And the She's girl, like, can you do mommy? I'm like, no, I cannot. Yeah, lie. no. This girl called me mommy recently in a scene, and we cut for a second to take a break. And I was like, all right, you already did it, but like, don't say mommy again. No. Like, I will dry up like the Sahara Desert. No, no. You know who does it though, and it makes me laugh, and I almost can't undo it because it just makes sense. Aiden Ashley, she will say some stuff. And I can't, and even though part of me's like, oh, God, she just said, mommy. And she didn't just say mommy. She didn't be like, oh, I'm sorry, mommy. She's like this, oh, mommy. Like, and I'm just like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. but it's Aiden. Yeah. So, but you're like, oh, fine. like, yeah. I'm very conflicted when it's her. I'm like, okay, you can totally get I away with her. it, but I still am not that crazy about it. Um, no, Arabelle asked me about it. She's like, can I say mommy? And I was like, I really wish you wouldn't. But yeah. I, I'll step mom it all day. You want to be mm. like stepson, stepmom, whatever. Sure, why not? Um, but <laughs> mommy doesn't bother me necessarily because I could be a mommy. It bothers me because it feels like something that only somebody under 14 should say. I don't mm. like the word because I don't feel like it's an adult Word. I don't feel yeah. like I don't really know a lot of like twenty year olds that are like, "Hey, mommy." Yeah. No, I. Hey, mom. I know. I know. Like Hispanic people that say "mommy," like M A. But that's like happy. But, but yeah, that's like you know. That's Spanish, not like so. that's like not not like mommy. Yeah, exactly. Like mommy is just like mama. Like mommy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's I don't like, like it. It's because it's not an adult word. Not because it couldn't be accurate, but because it's not. Adults don't use that word. Yeah. Not my adults. Not the adults that entered the vagina zone. <laughs> they do not say the word. The vagina zone go no night. Night night. No no. Nay nay. Uh uh. Nay nay on that. On that no, nay nay. <laughs> um thank you so much, Julia, for coming and making the time today. I appreciate you. You're welcome. Everyone time. be sure to subscribe to her OnlyFans and her website and um, your loyal fans. Is that correct? Loyal your, her loyal fans as well. And follow her on social media. And I will see you next time. Bye. Good to see a scissor. Scissor. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kenzie Taylor, and this is Feels by Kenzie Taylor. It's a water-based lubricant, vegan, cruelty-free, silky smooth, tasteless, and you're always gonna be wet. <laughs> you can pre-order now by going to feelsbykenzie.com. Order it now. What's the freakiest thing you've ever done? Um, eating pasta in bed. Not true, you licked my like Oh, I did, I did, but after I ate pasta in bed. Why was that so freaky? I don't know, it was a lot of sauce.